For a crispy, clean, tastefully modified R32 GTST Skyline, nowadays, you're looking at about $30,000 to $35,000. And if you're like me, and you don't have that sort of money to blow in a car, you buy the worst one possible on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> so I bought this R32 Skyline that had been stolen from its previous owner, beat with a baseball bat, and the engine blown up by the thieves. Now, I know you guys say that I always do a recap at the start of the video, and I'm gonna do it one last time, and that's because today we are picking it up from paint. And I want you guys to remember what this car looked like before I sent it off for paint, because it's undergoing a crazy transformation, and later today, we're picking it up and I can't wait to show you what color I chose. But before we do that, I've got some work to do. So let's go do that. While the car has been at the paint shop, we've been tearing down this RB25 DET Neo that we're gonna be swapping into the R32 Skyline when we get it back from paint. Now from factory, these R32s came with an RB20 DET, which is also an inline six, but it is a two liter. Whereas the RB25 being a 2.5 liter is capable of much more power. It has stronger internals and it also sounds like this. Now, of course, being a secondhand motor, we had no idea what we would discover when taking it apart. And when I drained the oil for the first time, the oil was milky. This meant at one point, the oil would have mixed with the coolant. This could have been due to a number of factors like the head gasket failing or the factory oil cooler failing, but it meant that we needed to tear this entire engine down to be inspected by a machine shop. So that is exactly what we did. Oh. My God, that's as bad as the RB20 that I had. Man, there are like chunks in there. <laughs> Bro, that's gross, man. <laughs> that's pretty bad. Thermostat looks all right though, sort of. It's crazy. So the RB25 has been completely torn down. We've got the block sitting here with just the crank installed now. Everything's covered by a sheet because I don't want anything to get too dirty. But we've also got the head right here, which we're gonna send off to the machine shop today. The reason why we're doing this is because we have no idea what's been done to this head in the past. It does have signs of, of course, machining in the past, as you can see by the polished surface underneath where the valves are. But the machine shop is gonna skim the head one more time to make sure that it's, it's completely flat. And we're also gonna get the machine shop to install some new valve springs, which I've got in a box over here. We've got some upgraded valve springs because apparently on these RB25 heads, springs go bad. So we've also got some valve stem seals because you may as well do those while you're in there and also a head drain. The head drain just goes on the back of the motor here. I think you remove the Welsh plug and it just sort of like sticks in right there. And then you drill and tap two holes so that when you're on full RPM, when the car's you know going forward, all the oil sloshing to the back can go to the back of the head and then drain back into the sump. Pretty simple stuff that the machine shop should be able to do with ease. And we of course are gonna get the entire thing clean. So it's gonna be looking super fresh when we get it back. So. Let's send it off and hopefully we can pick it up very soon. Before we send off the head, I've got something else important to do. And I want to say a massive thank you to you guys. That is because we are sending off the orders from bankyspec.com. This is our third batch of orders that I'm sending out today to you guys. So go check your mailbox. Most of those orders are these R32 Skyline hoodies and it seems like you guys are loving them because I've been getting a lot of messages from you on Instagram. But yeah, this is basically a representation of my last trip to Japan with of course the stolen R32 Skyline in the back. This is probably one of the best designs that I've got on a hoodie so far. You can see we've got the Family Mart Banky Spec logo. We've got me with the Banky Spec jumper and of course some information on the R32 Skyline. We're gonna do a little sale on the Banky Spec website just for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've got some other t-shirts on there, the hoodies of course, and other little bits of merch like keychains, jet tags, air fresheners. So go check out Banky Spec if you wanna help support the channel and the RB25 build. Anyway, I'm gonna send these orders off and then get to working on this RB25. So we went to drop off the head at the machine shop and then I came home and I stripped the rest of the block, removing the crank, 
as you can see I've just put it in the back of the Camry and of course we are taking the crank and block to another machine shop that specializes in bottom engine work. So it's been about a week now and we just got the RB25 Neo head back from the machine shop. Oh this thing's not light but it's wrapped up in some plastic to protect it. This thing's been decked which means the surface underneath the head here has been ooh, completely flattened. It's been chopped and trimmed. We of course got valve springs installed, just heavy duty valve springs. They're sort of like a stock replacement so that if you do decide to push more power, then they're not gonna start floating. We stayed with the original valves and also kept the uh, retainers in there from factory. This thing has been acid baked. It's nice and clean. It's ready for basically everything. We of course also got the machine shop to knock out that Welsh plug right there and drill and tap two new holes for the uh, Oil drain, bloody hell this thing's heavy. <laughs> While the head was being decked and cleaned at the head shop, I also went ahead and removed the crank from the block, checked all the bearings, and they were actually not too bad. I'll show you them in a second. But we've sent off the block and also the crank for the crank collar to be fitted with a long nose collar, which is sort of hard to explain, but I'll explain that when I get the engine and stuff and start putting it back together a little bit better in detail. But these are the main bearings. And as you can see, they aren't the worst. There's no real big grooves. There's just a bit of heat mark on every single bearing. And then we also took out the oil squirters as well because we need to clean everything. We, of course, are gonna be replacing these bearings anyway, so they're just there for me to look at. Um, we're gonna go and show you, hopefully, how to build a pretty stout RB25. Not that I know what I'm doing, but I'm watching a lot of videos of doing research, and I think I kinda know what to do. If you're an expert, please comment down below on the stuff that I should do to this RB25 if I've missed something. But because the bores are in kind of bad shape, we're getting the machine shop to check that as well. And if we need to go oversize, we need to go oversize. If we can run stock, then we're probably gonna run stock because we wanna do things to a budget. But of course, if we need to obviously, you know, ball out and go build motor, then that's what we gotta do. Building cars is literally a waiting game. Like we're waiting for the car to come back from paint. And we of course have to wait for the block to be done from the machine shop. We waited for the head to be done. And we also need to wait for parts to come from all over around the world. So, <laughs> Anyway, it was the next day and I got a call from the paint shop telling me that my car had been finished. Now keep in mind guys, I dropped this car off last month to get an open door respray. You know, an open door respray requires the glass out, the doors to be removed, the fenders to be removed. So I'm pretty stoked that this was all done super quick. But anyway, we headed over to the paint shop. It's about half an hour away from my house and it was time to finally see the stolen R32 Skyline for the first time in one color. Okay guys, we are finally here at Royal Dripworks. Just around the corner is my 32 Skyline and it's gonna be the first time that I've seen this thing in person. I could just see it through this little banner, but let's go have a look. Bro, holy crap. You killed it, man. Holy crap. What the hell? That is insane, man. Bro, that's perfect. Right, guys we are back with the r32 skyline the stolen r32 skyline painted in this color i have been literally sitting in the garage for the past like 30 minutes just staring at it before even picking up the camera because like i don't know it's kind of tripping me out how far this car has come and um the first thing i need to address is the color choice so on the camera it's probably not going to be the best sort of representation of what this actually looks like in person there is a deep metallic flake to this color the color is KH2. It's actually a factory Nissan GTR color. It's got like sort of some like blue sparkles in there and in the sun, it looks crazy. Right now it's overcast. So again, the camera's not gonna really show what this actually looks like, but it looks sick. I reckon it honestly looks wicked. I think it was a really not good choice of color. Looks brilliant and it doesn't, it's not very flashy. It doesn't stand out much, but it looks very clean. Yeah, that's one thing that like I didn't want to go for like a really flashy color because I don't know, I feel like when you paint these cars like, you know, like a deep purple or something like that, it just doesn't come out that good. It kind of looks tacky. I've been using that word a lot, but it kind of looks tacky if you paint 
car's a color that it's not supposed to come from for factory. Now guys, you have to remember what this car looked like before, not just like the mismatched panels and all that, like this quarter was completely destroyed. Dints everywhere. This wasn't even the bad side. This was the bad side over here. When we dropped this car off to Royal Dripworks, this quarter panel uh, didn't even have the glass installed. The previous owner actually had to buy a replacement glass, uh, but never actually installed it because the quarter like was all smashed here. Um, and the glass didn't actually fit up perfectly. So Roll Drip Works absolutely killed the bodywork on this thing. They pulled the panel out and made this thing look perfect. Like there, you cannot tell at all that there was a baseball bat that smacked this quarter and entire car. Like everything here was dinted. I, I just don't understand. I don't understand how he was able to get the car looking this straight. We also went ahead and did the GTR nose cut. So these Skylines, the GTST Skylines from factory come with what people call the long nose bump uh, bonnet. And basically it just goes all the way down here. And to make it look more like a GTR, you chop it and you put this little piece on, which I got from J Aero. What's impressive as well, is that this bonnet was white and they actually painted underneath it as well. Look at that. This was a white bonnet and now it's a GTR gray bonnet. They also went ahead and fixed up this radiator support, as you can see, because you know the car was in a collision right here. I don't know how the thieves managed to do that, but they smashed this entire radiator support and now it's straight. Crazy work. I wanna say a massive thank you to Mac at Royal Dripworks once again. If you want your car painted Southeast Melbourne, Royal Dripworks is located in Dandenong. Their Instagram will be linked down below. Anyway, we've got some goodies for the R32, so we're gonna to get to installing them. But yeah, they absolutely killed it and I'm so stoked with how the paint job came out. All right, so we're gonna start installing some of the interior pieces that we've taken off, like this little dash piece right there. And if you guys don't know this, everything in R32s are stupid expensive. Um, luckily, I do have this dash piece that did come with the car. We don't have a head unit for it yet, but we'll probably install one later down the line. But let's uh, make this look a little bit prettier because it looks horrible right now. This center console trim for the R32, you can buy for about six to $800 in good condition. Luckily, this R32 already came with one and I took it off before paint. I've seen broken ones go for as much as $300. The Skyline tax is real, especially on parts like these because a lot of people just break the trim when they take it off. Look at that, it looks way better, huh? It's such a scary thing like pressing this on and off. There we go. We're not touching it any more than that. <laughs> The car also came with this shifter boot surround. You just need to take the shift knob off in order to install it. And that completes most of the interior until we get the head unit. As you guys know, we installed a cube speed short shifter before we put the engine and box in. And it is like one of the best shifters I've ever felt. Like hands down. That's really nice. Yeah, it's nice. I'm used it? to sloppy BMW shifters, so this is a luxury. <laughs> yeah, the BMW ones are really sloppy, huh? Yep. Too many bushings, they'll go crap and then. Yeah, bro, it's that so simple. Is... Directly into the box. Luxuries. <laughs> but it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> this thing has been sitting in my garage for the past like three or four months. I literally got this. Um, from Raceworks when I bought the car. So this is a Raceworks steering wheel. Raceworks have been a massive supporter of the channel for a long, long time. And yeah, we're gonna be installing this steering wheel on the R32. Legally, you don't actually need to have an airbag steering wheel on these cars because they didn't come with one. So yeah, don't need to worry about getting pulled over with one of these, baby. So the R32 already has an aftermarket steering wheel installed on it, which means that it also has an aftermarket bus kit installed. So it's literally the case of taking off the old steering wheel and installing the new one. However, as you guys know, nothing is that easy. We did run into a few problems. There's two different bolt patterns on the boss kit. And of course, this steering wheel used the other pattern. So we did need to take off the boss kit and rotate it to install it properly in order to have the steering wheel pointing straight. Look at that. Look at that, dude. Hell yeah. Installing steering wheels is one of the most satisfying things. This is your most direct connection with the car in terms of using your hands and the on the shifter as well. And luckily we have both. So like, look at that. We'll get a nice crispy steering wheel to feel while we're driving this thing. <laughs> oh, oh no. Hmm? Oh, it's off. I have to rotate, I have to take the boss kit off and then. Okay, I spoke too soon. This actually uses uh, the different stud pattern that's on the boss kit luckily. So I'm gonna have to take the boss kit off rotate it and install the new steering wheel. For some reason, the boss kit was really difficult to get off. I had a go and Luca had a go and it was still just not budging. And then I had to go again and gave it a light tap. And for some reason, it just decided to come off then. What is this man? Bro, this is nuts. Yeah. I didn't like, I knew the direction you were heading in, but this is just crazy. 
Thanks, man. Do you like the color? I, fight, I do. You did a pretty, it's, it's, it's definitely glossy. Yeah. <laughs> nah, this is actually insane. Like, this, it's the nicest Skyline color I've seen in a while. Well, it's, you know, all the ones are black, white, blue. You never see one like this. Mm. I just need some gangster chromies and we're set. So we now have the steering wheel all installed. As you can see, the Raceworks steering wheel. Look at that. So nice, so fresh, so clean. For some reason, we're having a little bit of a problem where the horn is like sort of going off randomly as I turn the wheel. Weird R32 thing. Don't know if I just need a new boss kit or something, but it drives well, sort of. So as you guys know, we had the other R32 Skyline. The thing that I'm most appreciative of owning this one compared to the other one is that the interior on this one is so much nicer, guys. Like, look at the dashboard. Usually every other R32 is like, you know, cracked, you know, it has all these imperfections. This dashboard is literally mint. No cracks whatsoever. The only problem is the vents and all that, um, but we can, yeah, get new vents, I think, down, later down the line. And of course, this door card here, we need to replace. So we need to go look at the Japanese auctions and uh, find one. But uh, Mac also made me this sticker uh, of, for the R32. Have a look at this. That's the old R32 and then the car after paint. Look at that. How sick is that? I don't know where I'm going to put this, but yeah, <laughs> a little surprise from Mac. Thanks, Mac. We are, of course, going to need some new wheels, some new shoes for this because these rep rotor grids or whatever they are, are not going to cut it. And we, of course, are going to have this thing sounding hectic when it has the RB25 eventually. So yeah, there you guys go. There's gonna be slow videos on this because you know, building cars takes time, but I've also got a surprise for you guys on the channel later next week. So thank you guys so much for watching. And yeah, if you enjoyed, click the thumbs up and I will see you all in the next one. Catch ya.